Yes, mate. You're all right, guys. Welcome to the Monday special. So this is a fantastic collab, a Q&A with one of my favourite YouTube streamers, the one and only Retro Dude. I love this dude. He is retro. He is a dude. He's just great. I love his humour. I love his love and passion for gaming. And he's just an incredible guy. So I'm going to drop a link to his fantastic channel down in the description. Please do go and show him some love, guys. So let's crack straight on. There's some amazing questions here. So I decided not just to release this as a video, but it's actually good enough to be a proper premiere that everyone can tune into. And just enjoy the Q&A, learn a little bit more about me. Let's jump into it. Who loves games? Yes, mate. Hello guys, it is I, Retro Dude, Retro Forever, welcome. All right, uh, this is my uh, questions to Gaz Loves Games. Gaz Loves Games. My first question to you, buddy, is how did you start your YouTube channel and who inspired you? So, I started the channel back in November 2018. Um, it kind of was a thing that felt a little bit long time coming for me. Like, I suppose I kind of have been watching other big YouTubers, big sort of like names like Metal Jesus Rocks, Dreamcast Guy, uh, Beat 'em Ups, kind of like really cool guys that deliver real solid content with a real love for what they're doing. And I suppose it's, it's, it's getting into watching other streamers and video producers like this that really got me into YouTube for a number of years. So it was only a matter of time before I kind of combined that with my all time love of gaming. Um, and just forming the channel for me just had to be done. It was just kind of a way of delivering that little part of me that I wanted to just get out there and do something fun with that we can all enjoy and you know just become another part of this wide community that now is YouTube. So I think one of my main inspirations was probably back to my love for the video style of Dreamcast Guy. Now I don't know how many people how well known like this guy is but his channel is doing really well it has grown a lot since I very first started watching him but he always just delivers a real honest real down-to-earth opinion and just does it in an amazing way like he plays a load of good games he really knows what he's doing he knows what he's talking about and i think that's why the dude just like gets from me he gets the respect um and it's just good to be, be able to be like doing my own thing now and i'm just having a blast i'm enjoying hanging out with you guys a lot too so yeah secondly what was your favorite gaming memory my favorite gaming memory that is actually a really tough one because i think for me i've been gaming for so long ever since nintendo's first Game Boy handheld console. I've gamed all the way through the ages up to current day. Um, so it's pretty hard to have one kind of genre game defining moment. But I know there's been some big hitters for me personally with the retro consoles. Um, uh, it's probably going to have to be something that delivered the most sort of wow, the biggest kind of connection moment for me. It will probably have to be Street Fighter 2 because it the graphics were just next level, um, the gameplay, the way it worked, the special moves. I think that's what really carried my love for gaming forward. I mean, I remember getting my first Super Nintendo and I probably played on that game solidly for about 18 months, like a year and a half. Um, absolutely love it and although I haven't really gotten massively into fighting games since it was a massive defining moment for me that kind of like led into me discovering lots of other games and genres and things that I still love today. I think right up there as well would have to be like the first time I discovered Le The Legend of Zelda which would have been A Link to the Past and Super Nintendo again um, just like the immersion that feeling of being immersed in a new world for the first time was something really special um, and it was just there was just so much to explore I mean looking at it now the map of the game is actually quite small but for the time it was just like mind-blowing like, like, like so incredible and um, I just think it's really hard to beat some of those first memories that like you get with your real first immersive RPG so I'd have to put that right up there as well Three, what was the first gaming console slash handle that you owned back in the day? So as far as the first gaming goes, the first ever thing I ever owned was the Nintendo Game Boy. Um, so that was my first handheld. That came with Tetris, 
And I think I've got Super Mario Land as well, which I just like love. Like I played them all the time as a child. Um, we did also then at the same time get the Sega Master System, which was Gen 2, Sega Master System 2. Um, never really actually had that many games on the console because like money back in the late 80s, early 90s wasn't, you know, money was quite a rare thing um, and games were quite expensive. So yeah, Sega Master System was the first like to the TV plug and play gaming console that I ever had. I did also have an Amstrad PC, so I used to play some legendary games like Gauntlet and a few other like random blocky star games that I wouldn't even remember remotely the name of anymore, but they are some of my first gaming memories that I got to play myself at home. Fourth is, what are you excited for for the next generation of consoles, including PlayStation 5, Xbox 2, whatever that's going to be called, Nintendo Switch, Mini slash Pro. Can you tell us why as well? Excitement for next gen. I think that's a really good question. Um, I've got in intrigue for next gen, should we say. Um, my, my thing, like a lot of you guys know, I've got such a gaming backlog. Like, if I didn't buy into next gen, I could probably be gaming for the next five or six years and have absolutely no worries because, you know, I'm the kind of person that puts a lot of time in on a particular game. And for that reason, it means I take a long time to get through them. I try not to have too many games burning at the same time. So I've got a lot on current gen to keep me busy. As far as next gen actually goes, I'm definitely interested to see the direction Nintendo takes. So I haven't got a Switch, I've missed it out. Keeping my eyes on the light model. I'm thinking there's going to be an Excel model. I know they've talked about another version of the actual Switch, the one that I'll actually switch in and go onto the TV. You can get a version with a better battery. But yeah, really, I know it's only going to be a matter of time before Nintendo release the next model. They're, they're hooked on selling this new hardware, exactly like they did with the 3DS. We had the 3DS, we had the Excel, we had the new 3DS. We have the new 3DS Excel. Um, they'll just keep releasing new hardware to try and bring in more and more people as the lifespan of the console goes through. So I'm intrigued to see on where they go or actually will the next console then come out within a year or two and then be backwards switch compatible. I'm someone that's got a lot of my storage space already owned by historic um, consoles and game collections. I haven't got much storage space. So that is an issue I kind of, I would really like to get a Sega Dreamcast. It's a physical that I've always wanted, never had. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a bit of an issue and I really kind of can only buy into something at the moment if it's something that I really want and I'm really gonna use. So, you know, whether I skip next gen, like I'm not gonna rule that out. Um, I'm big on the retros, so I've got a forever backlog of retro games that I can deliver. But I do love Sony. Um, I skipped out on the PS2 all those years ago. There was a time when I wasn't gaming, you know, I had other things to do. The PS3 then brought me back in after the PlayStation 1. Um, so I'll, you know, I, I will be excited to see the PS5. I'll, I want to see what it is, what it's going to do, how much better is it. You know, if they're gonna, if it's going to be a little bit how like the Wii U with a Nintendo to Switch feels is in you're just going to keep getting a load of remasters. You get some new great content, but it's kind of not really taking it to a new place. I don't know. I've always got mixed feelings. Um, it probably would be good for me to miss out a gen, if I'm being honest, but I'll never make up my mind and I can always be a little bit spontaneous and make it rain, drop some cash and get a new console. I know you guys will want me to be on the newest gen platform as well. So, you know, maybe by that point, the channel would really have taken off if we can be earning a little bit of income from it in the future. And that's just going to help me warrant buying towards more consoles and more games. Five is what are your views on microtransactions? That's including EA, Matt, whatever, Activision. I love this question with regards to microtransactions because it's a massive topic for a lot of people and the gaming community. Um, there's a massive difference on what I believe can be done right with microtransactions. Where it's a really small, sensible amount of money to unlock, unlock some new content that's been made for a game, I think that's great. I'm for 
paid DLC where it's extending the longevity and it really adds value to the game. However, we all know that big companies like EA go and do things where they'll make a game around the whole concept is get like getting into those loot boxes, needing that stuff. And when they're gonna make that about swiping the credit card to actually play and enjoy the main game, I do not sit well. That does not sit well with me. However, with like what Rockstar does, whereby you can play in GTA 5 online, you can grind away to earn that money in game, and then you can spend that on whatever you want that you've earned, whether it's new vehicles, buy the new base, buy that new DLC with the money you've earned, or you can choose to swipe if you want to unlock it faster. Now I think that is microtransactions done correctly because it's giving the choice to your consumer. Where I think microtransactions are wrong, and they always are gonna be wrong in my mind, is where you're either purchasing something for an advantage of the main game, or whereby you almost feel that you need to do it to play. If you've spent your £40, $50, whatever it is, just know. Um, six is, what is your favourite memory from the 80s slash 90s? I think my favourite memories from that really early time period has got to just be around my initial gaming memories. So, when I really started loving gaming, if I'm being honest, was when the Nintendo NES came out and I finally got my hands on that. I was a little bit late to the party, but when I got that, my discovery of Mario Brothers 3, that kind of was a defining point. That was a game changer. That was me really hooked on something that is enjoyable and is at home console gaming. Something where you don't have to go down to an arcade to be able to play and enjoy a game. I think then also at the same time, like my love for Sonic the Hedgehog was quite big, so I was kind of representing between Nintendo and Sega. Um, it was only a matter of time until I did get the Super Nintendo and the Sega Mega Drive, or the Sega Genesis, as some of you watchers in the United States might know it as. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of fond memories, and they're, they're spanned across a lot of different consoles and games. But you know, for me, I was a Nintendo kid. It was the NES, the Super NES, the Super Nintendo that really did it for me and generated some of my favourite memories. But I mean, outside of gaming, it was just growing up and enjoying life. I like to think I had a good childhood. I did spend a lot of time gaming, but I had some great friends, we had some great times. And it was just fun back in the, like, the 90s being able to be a kid. One of the things, one of the discussions that I've been having with some people recently is how the world is in 2019. It's all about social media. Um, you know, I can't imagine growing up in this time period where pretty much everything is online. Um, you know, I remember being as a child, you'd, you'd have to arrange to meet someone at a certain point at a certain time because you didn't have mobile phones, you didn't have the internet. It's a whole new world. I think it was really great growing up in the 90s. Um, I wouldn't change that for anything. I'm always excited with current times. I love the tech available now. I can't even imagine if I was able to make videos like this in the 90s, maybe I would have actually gone into a full-time video career much sooner. Um, it's something that's there's so much competition, it's really hard to thrive in nowadays. But if I could have like grown up where you've got the internet and you've got online gaming, it would be very different. I probably would have spent too much time doing it. And I think that's what's important. It's important for kids to be able to get out there, like enjoy the world, see places, enjoy spending time with people. I think where we, we've got so much access now to stuff digitally and electronically, it, it's, just very, it's just very different. But I, I'm a massive fan of the 80s and 90s, just like I think everyone's a massive fan of the era that they grew up in. Um, and as I always say, you know, Memories and memories and each to their own. Seven is, what is your goals for your YouTube channel? Goals. Um, that's really, really good, mate. Um, it's a hard one. I mean, to be honest, it's 1K. We're getting so close, but it just still feels such a long way off. It, it, it feels like the struggle for growth is real. There's so many... I guess I have got issues because there's so many channels that do come in. They want to connect. They want to make out they're going to be supportive. All they want is for you to go and press their button. And I'm not down with this. 
Um, I'm really not because I know a lot of channels are having similar issues where you feel your growth is going well and then it constantly drops. Now, this could be a number of different reasons whereby channels genuinely, people delete their channel, cancel their channel. It could be a spam channel that got taken down, but it's really hard for people these days now in 2019 to meet your goal with so much going on with YouTube, whether it's if YouTube doesn't deem if you're watching enough of a certain channel's material, it might automatically unsubscribe you, but you have got a lot of people that literally are coming in saying, you know, me support you, hi new friend, and all they want is you to go back and click their button and they want to then unsubscribe from your channel. So this is making growth goals really challenging. Where it is working really well is when some awesome channels come in, they do a raid, they bring a whole host of awesome people that are going to love the content, that they're going to want to connect, and it just makes it a pleasure to be able to do YouTube uh, with some fantastic people with a great audience and that really does help channel growth. So for me getting to 1k is a big deal, it feels a long way off. But after that point, need to see what 1k unlocks. Um, I just really want to have the community option, I really want to be able to deliver updates other than having to drop a new video. Um, and I think for me that's one of the main perks of reaching that goal. And then I think, you know, if, if things seem to go well, we keep getting good growth, if we do then get the watch time, it would be great to be able to unlock some of that other, like, hidden functionality, things like channel memberships. I know some people would really love to be able to be a part of that, feel like they're part of the membership club, and be able to donate a little bit towards the channel, and the hard work, the grind that we do and put in every day and enjoy together. I know for all of us it is our hobby, but I know, just like I do for other channels, I like to go on, I like to send them a, a super chat, just to say, hey guys, I'm here, appreciate what you're doing, just wanna send you a little bit of love. I think a few other people have said to me they would like to do that. There are other ways you can get to do it, but I just think having the official means just makes it really easy and it feels the right way for people to be able to just drop a little tip towards what you're doing. I'm more favorable of that rather than it, than it being like someone just dropping you a payment via PayPal. I don't know, I feel a little bit weird about it all, but um, it would be exciting for the future of the channel just to see what unfolds. Eight is who's your favorite gaming mascot? Favourite gaming mascot? Oh, I'm just scratching my head, I just... Ah, oh, it's my boy Yoshi! <laughs> you guys know Gaz loves green. I'm wearing the Yoshi hat especially for Retro Dude Bro because I know it's one of your favourite hats. Um, I love this Yoshi hat. I love the little egg it's got on the side as well. Um, it's fantastic. I, you know, I love Mario Bros. I love loads of different franchises. I love lots of different characters. But for me, you know, ever since the Super Nintendo and Super Mario World, it's always been about my boy Yoshi. I do love Luigi as well, just because of his green cap. Um, but yeah, no, I think where, where it comes to like gaming mascots, I think those original fond memories from Nintendo will probably always be the strongest characters in my mind. Nine is, what would be the one rare game that you would like to own in your collection? One rare game I'd like to own? Um, that is a cracking question, bro. I'm glad you brought that up, because you're going to have to make me think now. I do own a few physical copies of things that are now deemed quite rare. Things like Conker's Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64, which was a game that came out right at the end of the console lifespan. Um, there was not so many of them made and released. It's quite a rare game and it does, you know, like it's gonna cost you if you wanna get that, especially complete with box. But that's one that I own. I own a few other rare Nintendo um, classics as well. If I had to think of something that I don't already own, I don't know because it's quite easy for me to just go in my mind to something that I know is really rare and really expensive and be like, oh, I want, I would like that just for the sake of saying I've got this super rare game, but then it's probably something that I've never actually really played before to actually warrant wanting it that much. For me, a game that I did always want, and I don't really know why, um, but I, I do have a love for Bucky O'Hare, and I did pick up a physical, actual, original copy inbox of Bucky O'Hare on the NES. Nintendo. It was quite a good find. The box isn't in the best condition, but I've never seen another box for a PAL version for sale. Maybe I haven't been looking enough, but I did pick up that game and it's one of my favourites. Also, um, Provotector 2 Return of the Evil Forces is quite rare. 
and I got that in fairly mint condition for what I think was a good price. Um, going back about six, eight months now. Um, are there other games out there? Yes, there are. Are there other games that I really must have? Not really. Games are available. You can play them via ROMs digitally a lot now these days. I don't think it's necessarily worth you guys going out and spending money on these rare things, just pushing up the prices more. There's always going to be those collectors that have got the money and the cash to put down. They're always going to want to own what's deemed to be rare, what's going to be the investment and worth some return in the future. But I think for me, like gaming was meant to be freely available and be able to be enjoyed. Let's just game. 10 is the last question is to you is buddy is where do you see yourself in five years time where do i see myself in five years time i don't know man i'd like to think that i'll still be hanging out with you guys still enjoying this i'd like to think there would be a point where if it is successful i could put more of my time into it i mean a lot of people don't realize how much does go in whether it's putting in hours towards a monday special like this <laughs> whether it's the two hours every night spent on the live streams or the other time then spent when I'm not filming on editing, trying to make new content, the time spent promoting, getting to know new people, new channels, and just try to help the growth of the channel, make it go the right way, a lot of time goes into it. So I like to think in future I'm still loving it. Um, if the channel really does carry on well, maybe I will still be doing this a lot more as a hobby. But, I don't know, none of us are getting any younger these days. We've all got our life commitments, we've all got our jobs, we've got to earn our money to thrive and survive. But I would like to think that YouTube still will always be a part of my life. And I think it would take a lot to get that taken away from me. Uh, but I don't know, I'm just enjoying it at the moment, guys. And I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I've enjoyed making it. I've loved the questions, Retro Dude. Thanks a lot for approaching me and wanting to do the interview as well because, um, yeah, I just really appreciated it, man. Um, I know you're a big fan of the channel. I know you wanted to do the video to put out on your channel, um, but I was really keen to deliver it as well, um, especially because the content's so good. I was keen to deliver that out on my channel. So as well, I can do it for a little bit of a plug, guys. I want you to go and show my boy Retro Dude some love because he is a fantastic guy. He's got a great channel. He does some of the best gaming, retro gaming live streams that I see on the platform. And it's just always a pleasure, man. The guy is full of love. It makes everyone feel welcome. I want you guys, if you're watching the video this far, just to make sure you pop on over. Don't just go over and press a button. I want you guys to subscribe. If you want to support another fantastic channel, do make sure you watch some videos. Do leave him a comment. Uh, let him know that Gaz sent you his way. And I tell you, you won't, you won't regret it. If you guys like Gaz, if you like gaming, if you like games, you're going to like Retro Dude as well. So... From a brother to another brother, I just want to blow up a little bit of support because Retro Dude, you're awesome mate and you deserve it.